Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and today is a very exciting video because we are going to be talking about my top 10 books of the year. So these are like my top 10 favourites, my favourite books I've read this year. Um, <laughs> I think I just said the same thing about three different ways. But yes, I'm very excited to talk about these. I also will be having my top 10 books that are like later half of the year. So that's like over my top 20 books because halfway through the year I did like top 10 from January to... <laughs> June and then I also have a top 10 from July to December but these are like the overall top 10 so these are the best of the best for the whole year um and then the other one so there is a tiny bit of crossover and I'm also planning on doing like a runner-up favorite so they're ones that didn't make it <laughs> to the final um but I still really enjoyed and had a great time reading but these ones are like the best of the best so um be ready for lots of gushing um yeah I'm very excited so Let's just get started. So the first one I'm going to talk about probably my, oh it's so hard to say, um, probably my favourite book of the year. Like it just, the sort of emotional trauma um, and the the fact that I've read most of the series this year and just everything about it was so like, it was just the perfect conclusion. Um, and that is Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. Um, so yes, I've been on a little run the Eldling's journey this year. Um, I've read pretty much all of them this year, except I think Ship of Magic and The Mad Ship, which I read last year. Um, but all the rest I've read this year. So I've been on my little journey um, and I know I've done it slightly out of order. But also I think I think it was actually a good decision because actually reading Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest, there's some things which I've noticed, which like, I feel like you wouldn't notice who you're reading them first, but because you know the like later context of the series, you can pick up on it. Um, so yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I think it's a testament to Robin Hobb's like ability as a writer that even though I sort of know what happens in them, I'm still so stressed and like so worried for fits. Um, but anyway, we're not talking about those in this video. We're talking about Assassin's Fate, which is my favourite of the series. Um, and I think I'm going to do like a ranking around the Eldlings. And obviously Assassin's Fate is going to be top. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think just um, everything about it. I just love so much Fitz. Oh, I love him um, so much. He's come so far. And like in this book, he's sort of at his oldest and at his wisest. But also he's like so kind of protective of those he loves. And just, oh, I just love him. And The Fool, obviously, I love The Fool so much. Um, and actually, again, having read, reading the original Farsia trilogy, I don't think The Fool is really that big of a character in it. I think just at the point I'm getting to an Assassin's Quest, he's going to become a bigger character in the kind of the second half. But so far, I just think The Fool is so much better in like the Tawny Man trilogy and the Fits and the Fool trilogy. The Fool in the Fits and the Fool trilogy is hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I just love him as well. And Fits and the Fool story, I love them in Assassin's Fate so much. And the moments and like how the book ends is just so perfect circle for the whole series. Um, and actually, the final line in Assassin's um, in Royal Assassin and the final line in Assassin's Quest basically tell you how Assassin's Fate ends, and I just love that so much. Um, but yeah, um, and just that like full circle. Oh, it's just so perfect. I can't believe that she was gonna f finish it on Fool's Fate because Assassin's Fate just it feels like the perfect finale, and like they couldn't have ended up anywhere else. And oh, I just love it so much. Um, and then B as a character, I love B so much um, as well. And I just love her in this book. She's definitely entering her like bad bitch era. <laughs> um, oh yeah, some of the things she goes through and oh, um, it's so heartbreaking, but um, she's such a strong character. And then also in Assassin's Fate, we get basically like a tour of the whole realm of the Eldlings. We're meeting all lots of old characters. Um, and just seeing everything and it's just so like it feels like the conclusion to the whole series like not just the fits of the full trilogy it's like everything the whole realm of the otherlings um yeah and I love the little gang that Fitz travels with like Ash, Per, um Lance who I did not like in books uh, in like Fool's Assassin and Fool's Quest but I actually decided to like him a lot in um, Assassin's Fate, which is one thing Robin Hood does really well actually, is characters you don't like at first you then love but I like the end, or characters you like you then hate. Um, yeah, and just everything. Oh, Motley, I love Motley. I never thought I would like love another animal in the realm of the Eldlings as much as a uh, Night Eyes, which Night Eyes is probably still my favourite, but I love Motley, she's a very close second. Um, and yeah, the dragons, just everything, it's just all so good. Oh, 
um yeah I just love the series so much it's so like emotional and yeah I don't know it just yeah so that was that one and actually oh yeah the whole I think I said this in my wrap up but the whole sequence in Clara's it was like 10 out of 10 literature it was so good I loved it so much um just yeah everything oh yeah uh, it was a great book so good so good okay there next we have another like favorite favorite and another conclusion to the trilogy um, and that is Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee this is another like perfect conclusion to the trilogy it's such like a epic saga um, it's truly like multi-generational um, and I love the course so much like I love them all love following them I love getting to know the children in this book I love the children so much Rue especially <laughs> um, yeah I loved um, Hilo's arc in this book I thought it was so good he's not my favourite but um, I just felt for him so much in this book and like seeing his growth and oh he was just so good I love when I love Shay there were so many moments in this book where I just like had your heart in your mouth and you were so stressed for the characters. Um, there's so many heartbreaking moments, but there was also some quite like heartwarming moments as well, just because it's like, it's a family saga and like seeing the family all come together and just, oh, um, it's so good. And yeah, I just can't recommend it enough. If you haven't read Jade City yet, what are you doing? Get on it. Um, I think this is probably my favourite of the three. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. That's, I hadn't actually thought about that before, <laughs> which of my favourite out of the three it is, but I think this one, just because, well, pro partly because of the kids, and also because it just spans so much time, and it's just so epic, and, like, some of the action, I don't know if you'd call them action scenes exactly, but, like, some of the dramatic events are so good, um, I love, um, what's her name, Ike Marder, um, she's a great character, um, yeah, I just love them all, um, oh, Andon, how can I forget that Andon, he's my fave, because he's like a doctor, um, and he's like the gay cousin, and just, <laughs> um, yeah, I love Andon, I love them all, and just seeing, I think this book was just so perfectly written, and so everyone's arc had a satisfying, like, co conclusion or tra trajectory, um, yeah, I think there was a good balance of characters dying versus characters staying alive, because, like, I don't like it if everyone dies, but I also don't like it if like no one dies. So I think there was a good balance there. But the deaths that did happen were absolutely heartbreaking. <laughs> I think this book has one of the worst character deaths I've ever experienced. Oh, I'm still not over it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it, and yeah, just cannot recommend this series enough. So get on it. Um, if you haven't already, okay, and the next, so the, I think these three, oh no, there's four, which are like my absolute top four, so we're still on the top four, and so that is Wall of Storms by Ken Liu, so I just started the Dandelion Dynasty in about November, and I just read all three books that are out so far so quickly, I just absolutely fell in love with this series, this book in particular, I loved so much, like, there's so much court drama, and um, Gia, one of the characters, is an absolutely unhinged MILF, and you know how I feel about evil MILFs. Um, the, I love following the children again. I think that's something I really like, is following, like, the next generation down. Because I also, there's a few other series which I really love, which, like, follow the children. Like, Shattered Realms, I really love. That follows the children of the original series. I'm sure there's some others which I've read, which I just really like. Um... I don't know, oh, uh, the, what is it, Age of Madness, I just have a weakness for it, I don't know why, um, and Thera, who is one of the children, I love her so much, she's probably my favourite character in the series, um, we also have a, a sapphic relationship in this one, which I was not expecting, I was so excited when it was, like, actually canon, because I was, like, shipping them, and I was like, am I making this up, is this in my head, and then it happened, and I um, and Ken Liu has a really sort of subtly beautiful writing style like it's very easy to read and I wouldn't call it purpley prose but just sometimes I think especially his dialogue and quotes of dialogue are just so good and they're so like profound and philosophical which I really like it was absolutely kills it with the themes they're so good um, and I love how sort of woman focused this book is and also the veiled throne as well just like most of the main characters are female and i just love them but the men are also the men have rights in this series i do like them like cuny i love kinry and the veiled throne um yeah they're the only two <laughs> no there are other characters um 
But yeah, I just love all the women. It's just, oh, it's that, like that meme of them. Um, what's the name? Joe from Little Women being like, women. Um, that is this book. Um, yeah, oh, I loved it. The book like takes a big turn about halfway through and I think it's so well done. Like just the tension and everything. The big battle scene at the end is so good. Um, I love how they're like overarching. You sort of see, instead of seeing like battle scenes up close, you do get a bit of the up close, but you also see the overarching picture, which I really like. So then you get a sense of like the strategy and the politics. Um, and it's so good. Yeah, I love the children. I just love all the drama and like, um, yeah, it's just so good. Um, I just, yeah, cannot recommend this series enough. And all the books actually, they feel quite different from each other in a way. I mean, they are similar and they're obviously clearly the same series. But like The Grace of Kings is sort of a tale of like two brothers in arms and rebelling against the empire. And then this one is like court drama and um, all that kind of stuff. And then The Veil Throne is like um, making your way in a unknown world. I don't, I don't know if I'm <laughs> explaining that one well, but um, I think, yeah, but I think Wall of Storms is my favourite. And um, ranking them, it would be Wall of Storms, The Veiled Brain, Grace of Kings. Um, but yeah, I just, oh, just love it. Um, but I think I have a feeling actually the final book, Speaking Bones, might be my favourite. Because like the way Veiled Throne sets everything up, it just makes me so excited. Okay, then the last book in my like top four spots um, is actually three books. And I couldn't decide between them. <laughs> um, but I just put The Wisdom of Crowds because that's the final one. Um, and that's the Age of Madness series. So that's another trilogy which I've read the whole of this year and just absolutely fell in love with. I love all these characters so, so much. They're probably one of my favourite cast of characters um, in fiction. Yeah, just especially Leo, also Ricky and Sabine. I just love them so much. I actually really love, I like Vic as well, actually. Um, and Joe Abercrombie's writing is so good. I love his prose. His humour is hilarious. Um, the the plot in this, because I didn't really like First Law that much, partly because I don't love the characters. I like Glockter, but the rest are just sort of meh. They're all a bit fantasy dude bro for me, but the characters in this one are so good. The plot is amazing. I love the sort of whole, all the themes are so good. I love the sort of how it's like almost the industrial revolution type thing. And the characters are just so like evil, but you love them and it's just also good um, and especially I think actually The Wisdom of Crowds is probably my favourite of the three um, because the reveals of the plot at the end are just everything like clicks into place and it all makes so much sense and um, I think in my worst books of the year video I was complaining about um, how thr plot twists in thrillers always just fall flat but the plot twist in this one well I don't know if you'd really call it a plot twist but like the sort of big reveal in this one just everything clicks into place and it's so satisfying and like as you're reading it you know what's about to happen about halfway like half a page before it actually does and just everything like just clicks and it's just so oh it's so good one of the best reading experiences I've had um Ricky in this book just an absolute girl boss I love her so much um and actually another one of the characters Leo, Leo who is a, little, a bit of a himbo um in books two and three has such an interesting arc in this book I I just love his character um just all of them oh, I just love the age of manners so much um it's definitely one of my favorite favorite series of all time um yeah just so good i cannot recommend this enough i think if you're like me and you didn't love first law um definitely give the series a try because it's just amazing and i think you could definitely read this series without having read first law um <laughs> you'll get a bit of a nasty surprise in book one but actually i'd completely forgotten about that so i also got that surprise in book one and um, a little hatred book one of this series not book one of first law um <laughs> yeah oops so anyway that is that one just yeah no um okay then next we have um psalm for the wild book by becky chambers so all my books are falling down so i love this one it's a little short novella but it had to have a place on this list because well becky chambers one of my favorite authors um just yeah i love her so much this book is so good it's so like it's like the perfect little cup of tea in a book just like a break from the busy world um i love the whole like um solar botanical energy to the book um there's a quote on the back which is like an optimistic vision of a lush, lush beautiful world which came back from the brink of disaster 
that like gives us hope for the future in her delightful new series that's what her books are they're so heartwarming and they're so hopeful and like they give you faith in humanity again um and basically in the book we're following dex who's a sort of tea monk and no he's not a tea monk he's a garden monk and he decides he wants to be a tea monk at the start of the book you know they travel around in a little cart making like special cups of tea for everyone who comes and visits this cart stand and basically they're like tea monk thing as well, like a form of therapy like they make you a special blend of tea and you can just sit there and relax for a bit or you can like chat with someone um and she's really nice but dex kind of has a bit of sort of wanderlust and they go off into the wilderness where they come across Mosscap, who's this like robot um, and robots have like gone from humanity like they took themselves off a few hundred years ago or something um and but now dex is like the first human to come into contact with a robot and just i love the whole dynamic and just the whole book is just an absolute delight to read um it's so cozy you could read it in like one sitting and it's just the perfect little break from reality like again the theme some of the quotes just hit you so hard and i think especially if you're feeling a bit lost and like not knowing what you want to do with your life i think this book is just so perfect and i just cannot recommend it enough um yeah i love becky chambers so much um so that's that one and then next we have light from uncommon stars by rika oki and i love this one so so much this again has sort of becky chambers vibes with like the cozy wholesomeness um and it's surprisingly emotional and it just kind of makes you believe in like humanity and just the sort of the spirit of humanity and like just seeing people's kind of experiences and like different walks of life and I just love it so much so in this one we're following Katrina who is um, a trans girl and she's like being kicked out of home so she's sort of run away to San Francisco and she's trying to make a career as like a violinist um, and she catches the eye of this like famous violin um, teacher who used to be like a performer but for some reason she disappeared from like the public eye and now she trains um, other violinists so Katrina is kind of taken under her wing but unknown to Katrina the main violin lady has um made this deal with this kind of devil um or demon not a devil demon um that she will train seven prodigies in the violin and then the demon can have their souls and then she can get her ability to perform back um so yeah that's quite fun and then also at the same time there's this family of aliens who flee to earth from their like dying solar system um and they have set up this like donut shop <laughs> um and they're trying to like discover the secrets to making the perfect donut because at first they like make them in their little replicate mach replication machine but then they realize that like actually there's something special about like homemade sort of donuts and, and i love that storyline and then the main um donut lady alien donut lady um also has a bit of a thing with the violin lady and i love that so much um so that's like an older sapphic relationship which i really love to see and just the writing is so beautiful the themes of like katrina's sort of coming into herself and like being confident in who she is and like the chaotic drama of all the demon thing and the alien thing and it just it feels like there's too much for it to work but it does just work perfectly um and yeah i just can't recommend this enough um yeah oh just looking at the um all the quotes on the back from some of my favorite authors um yeah there was one that's fantastic beautiful and deeply profoundly moving yeah delightful and heartbreaking it's just also good so would highly recommend um okay then next we have project hail mary by andy weir and i love this book so much i've actually read it twice this year because i reread it on audio in december um I, I well i read it the first time on audio but this book just has one of my favorite favorite I don't know if you can even call him a character. He is a character. Um, yeah, a character of all time. And that is Rocky, who is the cutest little bean ever. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Um, and I really like all the science -y elements of the book. So basically following um, Ryland, who wakes up on this spaceship and he doesn't know like where he is. He doesn't know when he is. He doesn't know who he is. And he has to try and work out like, yeah, where he is, what he's doing, like what he's meant to be doing there, what's going on. Um, and yeah, it's just also good. I think it's good to like not know too much about it and like discover as you go along. But it's just so good. I think Andy Weir has a great like humour to his books. Um, this book has a sci-fi trade pin, which is one of my favourites. I just love it so much. Um, and yeah, I love seeing it. And I love seeing all the science. There's a lot of biology. There's a lot of sort of 
um obviously all the spacey like physics and stuff um yeah it's truly really good like the problem solving oh i just love it and just yeah rocky is the highlight of the book for me just oh i love him so much um and the book actually has a really surprisingly emotional ending like the epilogue is one of the very few sort of sci-fi epilogues to sort of make me tear up a little bit not not out of sadness just out of almost sheer joy and it always oh, just so perfect um yeah i think if you're a fan of sort of any sort of sci-fi i would recommend it um i think if you like the martian you definitely like it but actually i like it better than the martian um although it is slightly more like outlandish than the martian but um yeah it's just so good and all that actually there's some of the flashback scenes because sort of as Ryland is remembering you sort of see flashbacks like what was happening that led him to where he is I really like those as well um there's this character in the flashbacks who is an absolute um yeah she's like this very powerful figure and she's so ruthless and I love her you know how I feel about powerful evil women but yeah um yeah I cannot recommend Project Hail Mary enough and then sticking on the sci-fi theme, actually I think all the rest of these books are sci-fi. Oh no, one of them isn't. But um, that is Catalyst Gate. That's the final book in the Velocity Weapon trilogy. And I really love this trilogy. I think I read them all this year. And um, this is another one with one of the characters which I just absolutely love. And that's Barrow, who is a talking um, AI spaceship. Um, and he's the best. He's tied for like top spot of talking AIs with Mbot from the Skyward series. Um, but yeah, I just love him so much. And I also really like the other main characters as well. So the first one, almost a bit similar to Project Hail Mary, actually. Um, following Sander, who is on the spaceship, and she thinks she's, like, 200 years in the future, and, like, her planet and stuff has been destroyed, and she's, like, the only remaining human. Um, and then she just has this talking spaceship called Barrow as her, like, companion. <laughs> um, uh, but at the same time, we're also following the immediate aftermath on the planet after she's gone missing like in the past and um, with her brother Biren um, and he is trying to like navigate the political situation in the world so I really like that the series sort of centers around this pair of siblings um yeah I love Beren I love Sander she's a really great protagonist I love Biren as well um uh yeah and then um sort of part way quite well not that far into the book but basically another human arrives at Sander's spaceship called Thomas and then that sort of escalates the plot from there um and yeah I really love Sander and Thomas and I like Thomas actually he's probably actually my favorite of the humans in that series um although I just realized <laughs> something um but yeah and I love Sander and Thomas in their relationship and Viren's um love interest later in the series who I don't think is in book one but is in books two and three and I just love both of the main relationships and yeah I I love all the drama the sort of um uh, more because book one is really sort of about Sander and the mystery of what's going on with her but then books two and three the sort of this um alien threat which I just love I thought Catalyst Gate was the best book in the series for me because I love all the characters so much like the relationship drama in book three is just unparalleled good um I really love seeing the sort of friendship bond between Thomas and Barry they're like the true enemies to lovers of the series honestly um they're um yeah I love um I just loved it all like the conclusion to the plot like the plot was so high stakes it was so good it was like it was action packed, but it wasn't too action packed. Like you still got the emotional character moments, which I love. Um, yeah, and I love the audiobooks. I think I really like the narrator for the series as well. Um, so yeah, oh, it's just also good. I would highly recommend that series. If you love sci-fi, just read it, please. Um, not enough people have read it. And another series that not enough people have read is The Pale Light in the Black by KB Wager. Wager? I think it was. Um, and its sequel, Hold Fast Through the Fire. I'm not sure I can really decide which is my favourite. <laughs> it's so hard. Um, and this is another really great series. Um, but I I'll say of Hill Light in the Black is my favourite. But actually, oh. Yeah, I'll cop out of this one as well and say it's they're all my favourite. <laughs> well, both of them. And um, we're basically following this crew of this um, spaceship called the Zuma Ghost. And they are like competing in these tournaments which is sort of like the Olympics, but for spaceships um, in the first book. But at the same time, there's this mysterious conspiracy going on because there's this like drug called Lifex, which like helps extend people's lives in space and lets them like stand up to space radiation and stuff. 
but there's like counterfeit drugs on the market which is killing people um, so that's sort of where the plot drama comes in. Um, but it's really just we're following the spaceship and the space crew and like similar to Becky Chambers novel, like it's very like heartwarming and emotional and there's a lot of like found family to it and like everyone's sort of like, yeah, learning their place in the crew and, and there's this new character called Max who comes to the crew, like she's the new lieutenant, um so she's like trying to fit in with the crew. Um and yeah, I just really liked it. I love all the characters. Um in book two, there's a polyamorous relationship, which I love. Um, and in book one, there's a sapphic relationship as well, which is like older and like the kids and the wife are back on earth and it's so cute. Um, and yeah, I love all the tournament bits. It's just such a heartwarming, like you'll have a massive smile on your face the whole time while you're reading. Um, yeah, I just really loved it. So would highly recommend that series. Um, and then the final book, I think it's the final book. Yeah, the final book is The Thousand Eyes, which is the sequel to The Unspoken Name. And this book isn't actually out till 2022, but I was lucky enough to get an arc and I was so excited and I loved it so much. I think I might love it more than book one. But this book is just, oh, I love um, Sorway and Shuthmali, who are like the main pair in book one. Um, I love their relationship so much. Um, and in this book, we sort of start the book with Sorway, Shuthmali and Tal, who are kind of the three main characters. Um, and they're sort of working in this like archaeological site um, and they accidentally discover this like ancient um, serpent goddess thing. <laughs> um, I think she's like the one they discover is like not the actual serpent goddess but she's like um, works for the serpent goddess and then they sort of unleash this like alien invasion essentially on the world um, and then there's a time jump and then the time jump then follows them kind of dealing with this aftermath of this invasion which I really love. Um, Tal, who's probably the main character of A Thousand Eyes, is the, oh, I love him so much. He's more of a side character in book one, but I just love him in book two. And I love him in book one, but he's like the lovable twat type character. He reminds me a lot of Hero from Library of the Unwritten. Um, and yeah, and in this book, he meets this other character called Sireg, who is this sort of um, runaway. So, in book one, Sorway is this like chosen bride for the unspoken. Um, and then in book two, Sereg is the new chosen bride. Um, but they're non-binary and they sort of um, come on into Tal's care. And that sort of grumpy mentor, like feral mentee relationship is the best. I think it's my favorite like iteration of that kind of trope that I've read. I love them so much. And Sereg like constantly teasing Tal about his age. It's just so funny. Um, and like Tal sort of taking on the role of almost a parent type figure. Oh, I just love it so much. Um, yeah, so I really love that. Um, I love Sorway and Tal, their sort of sibling-y type relationship is so funny. The like banter between them is hilarious. Um, I just love everything about the book really, like the plot was so good. The kind of, he's not really, he's not the villain, but like this slightly evil sort of, you never know whether you can trust him or not, wizard character called Belfandros is hilarious. Like he always steals the show whenever he's on page. He reminds me a little bit of Bias from First Law. Um, who I actually quite like. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a great character. We'll sing its praises. Um, I think more people need to read the series. The Broken Binding, a bookshop, are doing special editions of the series. So if you're a fan of special editions, then you have no excuse now not to read The Unspoken Name. Um, yeah, it's just my kind of fantasy. Like, so I like chaotic, um, queer energy. I just love it so much. Um, so I would highly recommend. And yeah, so that is all top 10 of my favourite books of the year. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun gushing about all these books. Oh, I love them all so much. Um, and yeah, um, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments what your favourite book of the year was. I would really love to know. Um, and I hope you all have a really great day and I'll see you next time.